Hey, welcome to my channel. I'm Jenny Logan. Did you know that one in four Americans have less than $10,000 saved for their retirement? That's a pretty scary number. So we're gonna talk about some things you wanna do in your 40s and 50s to make sure that that doesn't happen to you. In this video, I am going to go over the five mistakes that are crucial to avoid in your 40s and 50s. Steering clear of these five mistakes will make sure that your path to financial success is smooth and you have some really great outcomes and a wonderful retirement to enjoy. As we enter our 40s and 50s, there are a few things happening, some of them good and some of them a little bit challenging. First, in our 40s and 50s, we are entering the height of our career and likely the height of our earning potential, which is great. You know, we don't feel like we did when we're in our 20s and 30s, always, always broke. But the other thing that happens in our 40s and 50s is our lifestyle naturally expands. A lot of times we start families, we are buying homes, we are going on expensive vacations or buying new vehicles. There's just a lot of things happening during those decades. So because of it, it's really important that you focus and you think about what is important to you financially and what you want to achieve. Because we want to make sure in our highest earning years, we are allocating our resources as best we can and also enjoying those decades of raising a family and building our careers. So before you fritter away the next two decades, let's talk about each thing that you want to avoid doing so that way you have some good success. Number one, as far as financial mistakes go, that we see most commonly is people just not saving enough for retirement. Now, a lot of times that happens because they actually haven't sat down and run the numbers about how much they need to save for retirement. And so there are some things you wanna think about. There are some rules of thumb, which I will give you in the next minute. But first and foremost, I want you to think about your lifestyle costs. What does your lifestyle cost now and how are you really going to sustain it in retirement? And don't underestimate. You would be surprised how many people greatly underestimate how much their lifestyle actually costs. I'm not talking about an ideal budget lifestyle. I'm talking about how much is coming into your bank account and how much is really going out to sustain what you want as far as a daily existence. Another aspect of people greatly underestimating how much they need to save for retirement are thinking about healthcare costs, or rather not thinking about it. So what you wanna do now is think about, hey, when you get to 60s, 70s, and 80s in retirement, what do you think you'll be spending on healthcare? Now, I know for those of us in our 20s, 30s, 40s, and even 50s, that can seem really far away, and a lot may change with the American healthcare system between now and then. But as a general rule of thumb, I say at least look at what your employer is providing, what you're currently spending, and then add about 30, 40, or even 50%. At minimum, I recommend adding about $6,000 a year per person in your household at retirement as a nice padding to make sure that you're accounting for additional cost of medical, either insurance or just outside cost expenses. There are a couple other things when it comes to retirement savings that people just don't really consider, and those are investment returns and inflation. Now, inflation, you probably have some sense about because the last couple of years, the U.S. has had historically high inflation, at least over the last decade before when it was really low. So one of the things you want to think about is what do you think inflation will be like and make sure that you inflate your expenses in your projections based on that. I recommend rule of thumb about a 3% and then, of course, adjust in the coming decades. But just make sure you understand things are going to get more expensive. That's what inflation is. So whatever your lifestyle costs today, when you get to retirement, make sure you plan that it's actually gonna cost more. The other piece is the investment returns. And so you wanna make sure you invest your portfolio in a way that is going to get a good amount of growth. And I'm not gonna go too much into how to do that in this video, it's a little outside the scope, but most importantly, you wanna make sure you're diversified enough and be getting at least six, seven, eight percent on average a year. That's on average, talk to your investment advisor. Now, if you're not sure where to start when it comes to avoiding the pitfall of not saving enough for retirement, first, are you saving for retirement? If you are not, immediately start saving 5%. Just start there. If you are saving for retirement, make sure you're saving gross 15% of your household income. That's right. All 15% gross before tax. That is really going to be the key to success. 
And the truth is that may or may not be enough. You're going to have to do a more detailed analysis, but at least it gets you started on a rule of thumb. So if you aren't saving anything, please start today. And if you are saving, start ticking it up and approach that 15% gross household income mark. The second financial mistake you need to avoid in your 40s and 50s is not carrying enough life insurance coverage. Now, this one's not really that fun to talk about, but you really need to think what would happen if you passed away financially to your spouse or your children or anyone who is depending on you. Your 40s and 50s are your best earning years, so you can think of life insurance as a way to protect that, a way to protect that income if something were to happen to you so those you leave behind can continue on and not be financially devastated along with the emotional part. Questions to ask yourself when you're trying to figure out how much coverage you may need are things like, what do you want to cover? Do you want to pay off the mortgage? Do you need to pay for child care? Perhaps you're the spouse who's staying home. You still may need life insurance so that your remaining spouse can still go to work. So there are some things to really think through depending on what your family situation is. Here's some ideas if you're not sure where to start when it comes to fixing this mistake number two, not having enough life insurance. First, think about getting five to 10 times your income in coverage. That is definitely a rule of thumb though, and it's going to depend on what your income really is, what your household income is, what your lifestyle is, so you may wanna to talk to an expert. But if you're not sure and you just wanna get some coverage, five to 10 times is a good place to begin. The second thing is, is I urge you to get term insurance. And that just means insurance that only lasts for a certain amount of time, 10, 15, 20 years. There are some 30 year policies as well. They can be a possibility depending on how young you are. I do not encourage you to look into getting permanent insurance. And in fact, if you check out my channel, I have some videos on that. Start with term, it's the lowest cost and it's gonna be the best bet if you're trying to just get coverage for your family and not do it in the most expensive way possible. The third financial mistake that you must avoid in your 40s and 50s is, and this one's going to be the hardest, you need to avoid overspending on your children at the expense of your own financial goals. I know this is really hard, but it's crucial that you have a solid financial foundation before you overspend on things like college, extracurricular activities, and material goods for your children. Another thought when it comes to avoiding overspending for our kids. The reality is, is it's really important that you show your kids financial discipline. Most people's spending and savings patterns are modeled after what they see as children. And so while it might mean you're not gonna be doing some expensive extracurricular activity or something like a fancy vacation to Disney World every year, it will actually teach your children the importance of making tough financial decisions and for their long-term success, that's more important. I always tell clients, take care of yourself first and then the rest will work itself out. You definitely don't wanna put yourself in a situation where you overprovide or overspend for your children and then when you get to retirement, they end up having to take care of you because you didn't do all the things that you needed to do to shore up your own finances. The fourth mistake you must avoid in your 40s and 50s is failing to invest wisely, meaning you better have a plan for your investments and you better understand how that plan is going to impact your outcomes. If you have uninformed decisions when it comes to your investments, it's going to be detrimental to your long-term success. When it comes to investment strategies and being successful, I want you to think about two things, particularly in your 40s and 50s. Number one, you wanna think about your entire portfolio, every account you have, and how it's all working together to get you to the finish line. So we're not just talking about retirement, we're talking about your savings account, your maybe investment account that you're gonna use for maybe trips or another house, and then of course your retirement account. Every account you have is working together. But the other thing you need to think about is what is each account's purpose or what are you trying to accomplish with it individually? So using that same example, you probably have a work 401k that you're not going to need for maybe a couple decades. Okay, 
that account is going to look very different as far as how it's invested compared to maybe your emergency fund that you could need in the next couple of weeks if an emergency suddenly happens. So what I want you to think about when it comes to investing successfully in your 40s and 50s is that each account has its own purpose, but they all work together so that your outcomes are successful. The fifth mistake that you must avoid in your 40s and 50s is not having a sufficient emergency fund. You must have a fund set aside specifically designated for emergencies that come up that you don't know about. A couple reasons that people don't do this is one, they're spending their cash flow on other things. You need to stop that. You need to actually worry about funding an emergency fund. Number two, they think their job is maybe really, really secure or more secure than it is. And a lot of people find out the hard way that, no, we can all be let go at some point or we can all experience a dip in commissions or income. So it's important to make sure you have a fund set aside for emergencies. Not having an emergency fund can be really detrimental. And at any stage in your life, this can be a problem. But in your 40s and 50s, it's actually going to be a bigger problem than when you were in your 20s and 30s. So in your 20s and 30s, you have a lot of time. If you make mistakes, if you rack up credit card debt, if you take out personal loans, you still have decades until your retirement or until you're going to need financial security. However, now we've entered our 40s and 50s. That's not the case anymore. Financial mistakes that you make now could potentially compound your problems much more so down the line. Now, I'm not trying to scare you. What I'm trying to say is it's time, if you've not had an emergency fund before, it's time in your 40s and 50s to really do that. You can't rely on high interest credit cards or personal loans for emergency needs. That's just not a sustainable way to success. The good news is when it comes to solving the problem of not having an emergency fund, it's something you can do right now and it's pretty straightforward. Hopefully you'll get it solved before you have an actual emergency. What I recommend is three to six months worth of living expenses, though that can certainly vary depending on your circumstances. So really think about your situation. If you don't have anything right now, just open a savings account and start shifting money every pay period or every month into that account. Try to be reasonable about how much you could shift each month. You certainly don't want to go into debt trying to fund your emergency fund, but you also may want to delay other financial goals so that way you can at least start saving some liquid cash. So there you have it. Those are the five financial mistakes you must avoid in your 40s and 50s. The good news is if you avoid them, not only will you have a path to financial security, but you will also have a lot of peace of mind along the way. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And of course, consider checking out my company, Chisholm Financial Planning Investments. If you're looking for personally tailored advice, we provide comprehensive financial planning services, and we also offer a free complimentary consultation.